Hello, everyone. This is Drunk Comics, uh, a Phoenix Sisters cosplay production. I'm Crayley. I know you guys are used to seeing Kelly's beautiful face, but today you get to deal with me. Please hide your disappointment, because I don't know if I can take the extra hit to my self-esteem this week. Um, I'm here today with my personal friend and author, Cody Flores. He wrote the Black Rain series, uh, among other short publications, and he's here today to talk about a Godzilla graphic novel. Uh, Cody, do you want to introduce yourself a little more? Uh, yeah, um, I'm Cody J. Flores. I am a writer, author, um, independent slash student film actor, also recently a YouTube uh, content creator for movie reviews. And so I do that. Today we are going to be going through, uh, I was going to do a whole graphic novel of Godzilla Rage Against Time, but I have made some mistakes, and we are just going to do part one. This is, yeah, this is 12-year-old me writing, so, yeah. <laughs> we have <laughs> all made mistakes on uh, time management, how long we can talk about something, been way too ambitious, like, we feel you. Well, I mean, it just feels like this part one feels like they got a hold of a writer and they were like, dude. Do you want to make a Godzilla comic? And he was like, hell yeah, I do. Cool. You got an hour and a half. Get it done. <laughs> <laughs> well, creating something under pressure and getting it done is better than not creating anything at all. So. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> a little synopsis about this. Okay. Uh, the Godzilla Rage Against Time graphic novel is basically... Uh, different eras of time from like feudal Japan to uh, like you know the days back in Greece to like the Black Plague. It spans across time and the time the Godzilla and other uh, Toho monsters have uh, invaded and wrecked and crashed. So there's a, it's a five-part series and today we're going to be going over number one which is set in feudal Japan and I Ooh. think the year is 1274. You don't have to remember numbers. We get drunk so that we can't remember the numbers. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I mean, you know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All so right. Uh, we, like Kelly or sometimes I will try to have like a glass or a t-shirt or something from what we're going to be talking about to keep things themey. I don't have a Godzilla glass or a Godzilla t-shirt, but I do have these really cute earrings that look like a little Godzilla monster is biting my ear, so. They actually, those are actually really cute. Thank but you. you're in luck, because I got some Godzilla swag. We want to see the Godzilla swag. All right, so I got some shirts. I have other stuff, but they're all up in the attic because <laughs> I, I can't fit my, you know, toys and all that uh, everywhere. So we're now. But I think one of a lot these... of us understand that. I mean, I'm in my, my craft room slash nerd room, and it's like, here's <laughs> some of my Pokemon art, but it doesn't all fit on one wall anymore, you know? <laughs> no, it, yeah. Yeah, believe me, I do not have enough shelves or cabinets or other things to put Godzilla stuff everywhere. Nerd but problem. I got one of these at a mall, and I was, like, really excited, and I was like, it's an extra large, but maybe I should go for 2X, because this was not made in America. And I was convinced, get the extra large, it'll be okay. It's a skin suit. Right. <laughs> really seals in the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got another one my uh, cousin got for me. And it's actually the OG Godzilla. Right. Which actually fits, it actually fits pretty decently. It's also silky smooth, which I like about it. And then the one that everyone somehow sees me in, like, all the time. Like, I swear, I have other shirts. But if you actually go through a lot of my social media, I'm always wearing this one. I recognize that one for sure. I'm for sure. Pretty sure, like, when we met up in Indiana, I was wearing this shirt. And the last I think day, so. I was wearing this shirt. <laughs> it's not even my favorite shirt. <laughs> but on top of that... Uh, I'm also a huge fan of the 2019 Godzilla, so I couldn't pass up the production book on it that has the different designs and everything. Right? I think I saw that the last time I was at your apartment before you moved. Like, wasn't yeah. it on top of your, like, cube shelves or something? Yep, where my movie collections are. <laughs> yeah. Very proud of that. And then also, I uh, 
I have a friend who got me a uh, Hey Say Series Godzilla piggy bank that I used to hold up my keys. <laughs> it's actually really nice. It's a pain, though, to get the, the coins out of it because you got to take apart the tail. And the tail, you just can't put back on, so I just don't put anything in this Godzilla. Well, yeah, well, I would hope that. it was a pain to get things out of my insides, too. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. Black market's tough. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I just hate waking up in an ice bath with an extra hole. Like, where did these stitches come from? No, oh, right? Are these even dissolvable? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but uh, I also got another Godzilla from 2019. Also has another super long tail, which I also use to hold up keys sometimes. Yeah. You got to put these guys to use, you know? Nobody, nobody works for free. Ugh. But that's pretty much all I have. Everything else is up in the attic. I actually got, like, Really cool radioactive Godzilla from 95. I have a rare Godzilla 2000 thing that I found like back when KB Toys existed. Still KB like in the box. KB Toys. Yeah. I feel so old now. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, also I have a Godzilla tattooed on my leg, but this is uh, not, I'm not, I'm not showing that. I'm not wearing underwear, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> right it's zoom i feel like everybody is assuming there's a 50 50 chance that the person on the recording is wearing pants there's two of us that means one of us statistically is not wearing pants yeah well i mean it's just you know chest up so you know i was just like oh well who's gonna judge me <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right well let's get started with, uh, this is my podcast. I'll tell you when we start. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, no, no, yeah. You Okay. You take it. Let's get started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this is part one of Godzilla Rage Across Time. This one is set in feudal Japan. And it starts off with uh two warring clans, maybe factions, they're all in the same town. But you got one guy who's like, we need freedom for the people. And we have another guy who's like, well, we serve the people. But the freedom guy is like, well, no, you only serve your coffers and anybody else who has a lot of money. And I was like, oh, well, that's unfortunately relevant. <laughs> right. <laughs> but as they're sword fighting, the <laughs> guy from the Japanese army is like, hey, y'all need to stop this fight. We got some shit happening. And they're like, what shit's going on? W w w this is important to us. And they're like, no, we got something way worse. We have a Chinese general. He's on his way. He has 900 ships, 40,000 soldiers, and he's controlling two monsters, Gigan and Megalon. And they're like, okay, and we still want to fight. And they're like, well, you guys are the best fighters in Japan. We need you to go on a long, dangerous, and peril, perilous quest to go find the thing that will bring salvation to Japan and lead us to victory. And these two are like, eh, okay. So cut across to you pictures of them. They're riding across the desert, fast as shit on horses. And then they arrive to the mountains they're supposed to go to. To find this the camels story. were faster in sand like you know if you want to go fast in the desert don't you ride a camel well this is japan i mean they had horses but i didn't know that japan had deserts they might not though this is a graphic novel like you can't think that every manga or graphic novel about japan is like an accurate like could you imagine if people judge the united states based on like the looney tunes or something like uh, I mean, yeah, oh. I, I mean, I could, but, <laughs> but we're also talking about a graphic novel with monsters, so realism's right. kind of out the window. Right, right, right. <laughs> but these guys, they are traveling, they're on their way, they are going to go save Japan from this incoming army. And along the way, they get up the mountain, and they're like, hey, there's a temple up there, that's where we need to go. So they're climbing up this mountain, and then all of a sudden an earthquake happens. 
And one of the guys, the guy who's like, I'm a part of the people of the thing that serves the people. He starts falling off a cliff because of the earthquake. Well, the other person grabs him and he's like, hey, you need to pull me up. And the other person's like, you're too heavy. And this is the part that comes out of nowhere. It just happens to be the other person who's fighting for the people happens to be a woman. Comes oh. out of nowhere. And he's like, oh, well, you're a woman. You're weak. And she's like, no, I'm a strong, independent woman. Feel my wrath. And then launches them over with some OP power and saves them. And as they're arguing, because he's like, oh, you're just mad at me because I made a joke about your gender? And she's like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> I feel arguing, that, though. Do I? I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> they're arguing. She's got a bow and arrow ready to launch at him. He's got a samurai sword. They're about to fight again, like at the beginning. But then all of a sudden, they start hearing scuttling noises behind them. Are we finally going to get to the monster part? I feel like that's every Godzilla publication, though, as you're like, I care a little bit about this other stuff that's going on, but like, where are the monsters? <laughs> well, they were mentioned, you know, they're like, hey, we got these two monsters who are on the way with the, with the general because he's controlling them somehow. We don't know, but we promise they're on the way. They were probably sitting on one of the 900 ships that's on the, I don't know. Uh, it, it's like a meta commentary at this point. It's like, we <laughs> promise there are monsters. You just we don't get to here. see them yet. <laughs> we don't know how they're swimming because, the, yeah, they, they don't do that. <laughs> 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 they're literally the two monsters that can't be in water. <laughs> but so they turn around and they see a legion of crabs. But, you know, like the clickety-clack crabs, not like Okay, because I was literally one, just about to be like crab. crabs, like like crustacean, like Joe's Crab Shack crabs? Yes, which thankfully is not with the one-night stand, you know, I made a bad bar choice crabs. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a lot harder to illustrate. You know, they're so small and everything in comparison is so big. Although giant, like, pubic crabs would be really scary. I'm yeah. not reading that horror novel. Yeah, no, I think that wouldn't even be, like, a Godzilla novel anymore. That'd just be like, no, oh, did Chuck Palnut come up with this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. It's going to be in a David Cronenberg film. <laughs> <laughs> but they see these crabs. They're clickety-clacking at them. They're right. They use their bow and arrow. She's shooting the crabs between the eyes. This guy's using a samurai sword. He's cutting through them left and right. They kill off the crabs. And they were like, good job. Let's continue up this mountain. And so, cut to them being at the top of the mountain. Because... Like winners. Needs to happen. Who needs to show pictures of them actually climbing up and making the journey when they can just teleport? Right. So, they arrive at the top of the mountain. They see the temple they need to go to that'll be the salvation and the hope that Japan needs. And suddenly, in this temple... A giant, multi-headed dragon appears. Like it's, you do. You don't even know how many heads it has. Like, I'm assuming it's supposed to be, like, a precursor to King Ghidorah, Godzilla's biggest foe. But it's just kind of like trying to count the heads in the comic book. You're like, are the heads changing count? Okay, but that's all comic book panels, right? Like, literally, you go from one panel to another panel, and I'm looking for Wonder Girl references, and I'm like, okay, she's wearing red pants in this panel and blue jeans in the next panel. Yeah, you're like, uh, are we sure that, like, all the illustrators are, like, got on top of this? And we're like, yeah, no, we're doing the same thing. Right, really right, right. Wonder. But, but we, they, can, we can give them the benefit of the doubt in this instance that it's just showing how unobservable and overwhelming the number of heads is. This is true. What What is the Hydra? Like a Hydra almost? Yeah, like? yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut one head off, two more pop up. Believe me, the whole time you were talking, I was listening, but I was like, what the fuck is the name of that thing with all the heads? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be the idiot. You're just like, yeah, you keep talking about your thing. I'm going to Google real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to do that. <laughs> I don't want to be like, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> but yeah, but now you just told us. So now we all know that there's nothing in your brain except Godzilla trivia. Uh, and uh, alien and predator trivia. I, I have a lot of that, too. Right. 
Yes. Right. Which, yeah, no, we'll wait after this one because I I, I do have a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's but they cool. We love repeat guests. So they're at the top of this mountain. <laughs> they're at the top of this mountain. They see the temple. In this temple, there's a giant multi-headed dragon. And they're like, oh, shit, that's a big dragon. And this dragon's just roaring. He's being an asshole because there's one thing that monsters are good at. It's not shutting the fuck up. Right. <laughs> and they're like, oh, this thing's big and scary. And out of nowhere, beyond the roars of this dragon, they hear wonderful, enlightening, soothing, calming, beautiful music. And two twins appear out of nowhere. And you're like, okay, there's some twins here. All right, whatever. And the twins are like, hey, y'all need to tame this dragon. And they're like, uh, okay, that, how do we do that? And they're like, what you have to do is, lady warrior, I am gonna give you some magic flaming arrows. Here's some voodoo magic. You have flaming arrows that explode now. You, big guy, big champion, you gotta go in that tunnel, past that dragon, and you gotta get a relic that can control this dragon. And he's kind of like, well, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the woman warrior, she's like, all right, I'm gonna use this magic bow and arrow and I am going to shoot it at this dragon. She shoots at the dragon, it blows up. Dragon stunned for a little bit. The guy is able to get past this dragon and get into the temple. And of course, he finds his relic. And like every other relic and every other media, it's carved to look like that monster and it's green. Right, right, right. Um, I, yeah, I don't even know what the color is, but it's green. <laughs> so he comes back out and he's like, All right, I got this. And the twins who went from the, from the front of the tunnel. Now somehow they're with him at the back of the tunnel because they teleport. That's how it happened. Maybe happens. the twins were the dragon all along somehow. Uh, that would actually bring a lot of sense to this story. But it, it doesn't need to make sense. It's a Godzilla graphic novel. For a good story, it needs to make sense. <laughs> hey, your books make sense. That's what really matters. <laughs> <laughs> right? Shameless plug. Here. This guy writes books. They make sense. I do. I, I write. I write. I even. I even have merch. I'm wearing a comfortable right. last hoodie. It's on Redbubble. Yes, we'll, we'll, it is. we'll put links in. We'll put links in. It's fine. Perfect. <laughs> but this guy gets the relic. They tell him, "Hey, you need to run out there, and this is how you control this dragon." And he's like, "All right, I'm going to do that." As he's running outside of the temple. The lady is like, oh, man, this thing is no longer stunned. It's trying to eat me. Thankfully, the guy shows up, and he's like, hey, I got this thing. And then the dragon's like, oh, shit, he's got the thing. Okay, homie, that's what's up. <laughs> uh, you know, so you're like, okay, cool. They might use this thing. When is Godzilla going to appear? Oh, out of nowhere. All right, now. He gets hit, this dragon gets hit by a blue blast of atomic breath. And you're like, oh shit, it's about time for Godzilla to show up. Because you know that's his atomic breath. But then you also got to put into perspective that Godzilla is on the same mountain with his neighbor being loud as shit. He's got friends over making loud ass music. They're popping off fireworks. And he's got to fucking wake up. He's like, no, no, this, this, I need to go back to sleep. This bullshit. <laughs> he comes over, he hits the monster with his atomic breath. The monster's like, oh, so you want to, you, monsters, the dragon was probably drunk. So he was like, oh, so you, you want to go? Do you think you can handle all this? And Godzilla's like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> go to fucking sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and so he takes out the monster probably kills it i don't know it could be aggravated assault could be first degree monster murder we don't know we just know, <laughs> know. That all we know is he does drop a mic and say that's why they call me king of the monsters that that'd be nice if they added that in the story it'd be great for storytelling we should write this we should write a new one. <laughs> oh, we probably should 
<laughs> Make it very meta. Question is, can either of us draw? Because for it to be a graphic uh, novel, somebody's got to draw it. I, I might be able to know like a couple of people who could draw it. Okay, so it's gonna have to be like at least like like instead of like a partner effort, it'd have to be like a team effort, like three yeah. people or more. It'd be like a group project, except we're adults, so you know we got to make sure everybody participates. <laughs> <laughs> just be like, look, if you want to get money, you got to do at least part of it. We're not just writing everybody's name at the top. Yeah, there's like that one nerdy guy who's like, well, don't worry, guys. Uh, apparently, I'm the only one working today. <laughs> I was that nerdy guy. I was that nerdy guy <laughs> in all the group projects. I guess in a way, I was kind of like the same nerdy person, except I was like, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this drunk. Hope you all got <laughs> Grammarly. <laughs> <laughs> but Godzilla stomps this monster. Kills it. Two twin ladies, they disappear. They're no longer part of the story. And so the two main characters, the guy woman they look at each other and they're like ah shit what do we do now and they're like ah bring this guy with us then we'll take him to japan and he's like that's a good idea so they're like all right i'm gonna shoot some flame and explosive arrows and get his attention so of course they hit him with explosives and godzilla's like oh my god oh my god the drunk asshole the people with the fucking music these assholes now they're fucking shooting me with goddamn fucking fireworks, I've had it! The neighborhood is getting an ass whooping. I don't even care. <laughs> so he starts following them. They're riding like hell back to Japan, and Godzilla is just slowly lumbering behind them, as Godzilla does. Cut to the little village, city. Did feudal Japan actually have cities? I don't know. I'm, I'm certain they did. Like... In city is a relative years. term. It just has to be bigger than the towns around it to be a city. Well, then it's a city. Cut back to the city. Not even, like, worried, like, hey, is Godzilla just shooting atomic breath at him the whole time? Is he throwing some rocks? Maybe kicking them? I don't know. Nobody really knows. It just cuts right to Japan. The whole place is on fire. And all the military generals are like, oh, man, this is, this is going to be the end of us. Oh, man, why did we send the two people who were fighting with each other? Why did we send them? They failed. I cut to Gigan of Megalon. They're just destroying, like, half this city. They're just going to town, lighting things on fire. Okay, for, okay, for, though. For our viewers at home who don't remember what those two particular monsters look like. Not me. I totally remember. What? Which two are those? <laughs> All right. Uh, to put it simple, Gigan looks like a giant space chicken with a saw in his stomach. And Megalon looks like a beetle. Oh, I know that one. I yes. mean, our viewers, He's our got viewers probably hands. know that one. Yeah, with the. <laughs> I don't know how to. I don't know how to mime it. I just know that I remember what that one looks like. But the yeah, the, those the two. space chicken one. I'm gonna recommend that our viewers totally google that no i'm I, pretty sure I if you not, even... not be joining them and googling what that looks like well, i mean heck i'm pretty sure if you go into like google <laughs> or any search engine just put in space chicken within like the first top 10 searches there is going to be a picture of geigen hold on hold on <laughs> space no H, H, chicken. There, we go. no. Hold on. It. Don't Google drunk, kids. Don't Google drunk. Or actually, do Google drunk. Who knows? You might find some kinks you didn't know about. <laughs> you are wrong. Apparently, there's a lot of fan art of chickens as astronauts. So, oh, really? Yeah, I would. Space astronaut chickens. That is a shame. Get your shit together, Google. Right? Like, <laughs> obviously, we Googled space chicken to find out about the Godzilla monster, right? What happens if I put Godzilla right behind space chicken? 
You, uh, you might get a space chicken Godzilla. <laughs> the space chicken has arrived. Is 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 that the space chicken you're looking for? Yep, that's yeah. him. Okay, okay. So this is this is why we put as many key terms as possible in a Google search, kids. <laughs> it really narrows it down. Uh huh. There are a lot of things. Some things. This is an educational video now. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, where were we? Okay. So Gigan, Megalon, they're uh, lighting this whole city on fire. The Japan army, they are losing to these 40,000 Chinese soldiers. They're like, uh, and the generals and everybody, they're like, oh, we are going to lose this. They are going to crush Japan. We are going to lose everything that we were known for. And you're like, oh, man. That sucks. Oh, wait, hang on. Another blue beam of like, of atomic breath. You're like, my, yeah. My unicorn is getting fresh with me here. Hold on. <laughs> Just, no, go. Okay, light and shit on fire. <laughs> light and shit on fire. Military leaders are like, we're going to lose this. Uh, China's going to crush everything we're about. And then all of a sudden, and a blue beam of atomic breath. Hits Gigan and Megalon. Up shows Godzilla with the two main characters, the guy and the chick. They're like, hey, we're here to fight. And you're like, oh yeah, time for a monster battle. And so all you focus this, on this is what battle. we all came here for. This is what we came here for. People versus people, monster versus monsters. And uh, I gotta say that Gigan and Megalon really suck. Because they're fighting Godzilla like a classic RPG, just one at a time, instead of working like a team. So Godzilla's like, "Yeah, no, nah, I'm just gonna start beating ass. I don't care." <laughs> so they get into it. Godzilla's hitting him with atomic breath. He's using his tail. He's using his teeth, claws, feet. And the Chinese general's like, "Oh man, my two boxes are really—they are really fucking it up right now." Well, don't worry. I'm gonna control him with this thingy I got. And Why didn't you like, start with that, you asshole? Like, <laughs> <laughs> because he's focusing on his, uh, you know, nine hundred ships and forty thousand soldiers. And he was like, I mean, oh, oh man, there's another monster here. I should have known that having two other monsters. I should assume you gotta there's fight monsters with monsters, time. man. <laughs> so he's like, hey, you guys are gonna work as a team, and then so both the controlled monsters are like, yeah. We're going to work as a team. And so they uh, get the upper hand. They start beating Godzilla's ass. They're hitting him with the saw. They're hitting him with the drills. They're shooting him with their beams. And the uh, woman with the uh, magic arrows is like, oh, hey, that's not good. I need to stop that. So she pulls out her flaming arrow, sees the Chinese general with this giant thing he has that's controlling Gigan and Megalon. She aims, shoots it on the far side of the map. It goes all the way through, destroys this device the dude has. She Megalon aims, and Gigan she shoots, like, she scores! Basically, yeah. And it's kind of like, oh, it, it was like a Call of Duty map, you know? Like, really? From the other side of the map? <laughs> I'm gonna nod like I know what you're talking about. Some of the viewers might actually know. They might be like, ah, oh, yeah, no, I remember when that shit pissed me off. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure some of our viewers have played one of the most popular first-person per shooter games ever. Okay, so some... what, is God, what is Godzilla doing now, though? Cause... All right, so these monsters, they start working as a team. They get the upper hand. They're beating Godzilla's ass. All right, girl is like, oh, yeah, no, I can't let this happen. She shoots the arrow, destroys the device, and the Chinese general is like, hey... Cut back. That's not fair. <laughs> no, that's not right. <laughs> Cut back. The uh, guy and Megalon are like, ah, oh. ah, oh, shit, dude. What the hell were we doing? And Godzilla goes back to whooping their asses. Right, right. Suit it up. He, he just atomic breaths them to death. He, he, I'm assuming they're dead too. I'm assuming because, well, He's already had just a bad day. Everyone is going to feel his wrath. Well, I have a bad day when people wake me up with explosions, too. Like <laughs> Loud music, drunk assholes, <laughs> fireworks, <laughs> I've had it! 
<laughs> now magic i am done with this so right, he suddenly turns into king of the hill and he's like i'm gonna kick your ass in like a texas <laughs> accent that i cannot do <laughs> i can't do it either this is why i'm not a voice actor something something propane and propane accessories godzilla propane, propane accessory. <laughs> <laughs> damn it bobby <laughs> the boy ain't right <laughs> <laughs> the boy ain't right. <laughs> oh, but Godzilla destroys Meglon and Gigan, and somehow destroying them uh, means that Japan destroyed all 40,000 soldiers. And Godzilla is just like, my job's done. I'm going to go in the ocean now. <laughs> That's. That's where he goes to sleep now. He's like, it woke me up but on the mountain. He was living in a mountain, so I'm guessing he's just in the market for a new home. Right. He's tired of those neighbors, even though it's like, <laughs> dude, you just cleared out your neighbors. <laughs> Go back Doesn't to your mountain. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. This has a reputation as a party spot now. He's got to move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like those people. I'm out. <laughs> but he leaves. The Chinese army is defeated. We don't know what happened to the general. Uh, nobody really killed him, so I, I'm assuming that he probably teleported away back to uh, China, left all his 40,000 people there. And uh, it cuts back to the main characters, the woman, the dude, and the dude pulls out the relic of that multi-headed dragon. And he's like, people don't need to harness this power. And crushes it with his fist. The end. Now, my question is, is that the boss, the drag was already dead. What are you doing still carrying around that fucking thing? Right, like, wouldn't it be heavy? It like, power. <laughs> it's made of green. Green has to be heavy, right? Yeah, he's carrying it around. All you saw is he had it in the temple, came out. With the dragon thing, he's like, I control you. The dragon's like, oh, yeah, no. I, I, I bend to your every will. And then you never see it again. And then, like, at the end, he's like, this dragon might be dead. This thing holds no power at all. I was carrying it around for no, for absolutely no reason except this moment. <laughs> the end. <laughs> right, right, right. He's probably carrying it with them as they're, 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 they're being followed by Godzilla to the battle going, but I might need to make a dramatic statement when the battle is over. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know. Maybe he was like planning on like, hey, you know what? We're going to keep this in my family. This will be <laughs> my family heirloom right here. And yeah, no, he was, I'm just going to crush you with my hands. Like you didn't even have that whole superhuman strength enough to crush rock like that. This whole book. <laughs> And yeah, so no, uh, I, I was thinking about doing the whole rage, rage Across Time thing, but this part one is, it, let me start off with what I like about it before I get into what I don't like. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to do a pro-con list, like the nerds that we are. Pros. I already got one. All right. The pros of this, the artwork and the illustrations. They're really nice. They actually have like traditional Japanese art style to them, which I really appreciate. And the what I like about the comic books when they come to like Godzilla monster comic books is they make them a lot more like animated. They look a lot more <laughs> badass than like, you know, d dudes in a rubber suit because you can only have so many movements. But these ones, they are really fantastic. It's kind of like, yeah, no, these are threatening. We, we, we have a guest. Well, you got a puppies. I, I have puppies, too. She's like, okay, Godzilla has fire breath, but I have a shark. Doesn't that matter for anything? No, he has a shark, too. Lily, go get your shark. <laughs> or not. Whatever. I'll be okay with the ham. <laughs> <laughs> um, should I do the pros over again? No, 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 no. Pro one is Japanese art style, nice illustrations. I listen. <laughs> I listen, even though I'm drunk. All Speaking right. Uh, 
the Two children. is the uh, monster designs, the creations, the fact that with doing artwork, they actually look a lot more imposing and a lot more threatening. Um, pro number three, the title of the graphic novel sounds really cool. Rage Against Time! Yeah, it's kind of like, man, that would, that that is that is badass. I can't wait to see what's in store. Part one. <laughs> <laughs> and that is all I have for pros. Three pros. Three pros. Is that three finger? Three, three, three pros. Yes. Ah, three. Now it's time for the cons. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cons. No, wait, right. this is the pros. This is the cons. One of those. <laughs> All right. Cons. The first part of this graphic novel. Two. Out of 900 <laughs> ships and 40,000 soldiers, but only 44, if you add it all together, are able to fit on these ships. I really think that they were undermanned, but at the same time, 900 ships, it's like, where do you find the time and the resources? China's big? The no, wait, most of China's a desert. Yeah. Right? I think so, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Seventh grade geography B. Crayley is sitting here, like, scanning through her world maps going, right? Right? China's mostly desert. Uh, well, uh, I don't know. This was in 1274, so maybe the whole place was a desert. <laughs> they had one jungle that had pandas. <laughs> <laughs> and then they fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just had to get overzealous. Right, but, then zoos had to invent panda porn to make sure that they repopulated the species. Uh, yeah, and that's still not working. That's a real thing, though, guys. Look yeah, it, up. it is. It is, and they're like, yeah, no, you guys need to repopulate, and pandas are like, how about you just give me more bamboo and shut the fuck up? How about <laughs> that? How about that? Well, you need to watch porn and impregnate another panda. I'm just gonna beat off of my bamboo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for visual number at least 10 of the night that I did not need. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Humor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> damn it. All right. So that doesn't make sense. You don't know how many people are in the Japanese army. And uh, the story is just weak. It has just very unnecessary drama. Like, it was, they had like the whole thing like, hey, we're a warring faction. Also, you're weak because you're a woman. But there's no resolution. And they oh, like so they don't show you what happens like back in the village where they're like where they were fighting with each other? No. Yeah, it's just kind of uh, like, okay, well, we didn't like each other. So then you're a sexist asshole, but we're working together. We won. That's our character arc. I guess you're supposed to assume that they go home and tell everyone the story. Of how, like, Unity slash Monster Powers defeated the Chinese invaders. I like to uh, think that at the end of the story, they, they ended up getting married and lived a, a happy life ever after, you know. And then, uh, I don't know, uh, she just bitches at him, like, you know, years down the road for the rest of his life. Like, you remember that one time we could have had this rock? You remember that? <laughs> I had to break it. <laughs> you dick <laughs> it was a pretty green rock we could have given it to our children yeah exactly this could have been in our family we could be in charge of Japan you selfish super strength asshole <laughs> but I mean there's that and then uh, just I mean I don't mind stories that are like breakneck speed but at least make them like coherent. Cause it's like, oh, hey, we have this drama. Hey, we need you guys uh, to go to this temple because China's invading. All right, we're on the mountain. Hey, there's a monster. Hey, these two twins showed up. 
hey, Godzilla's here now. Uh, okay, cut back to Japan's on fire. We're in a fight. He's fighting. Uh, shoot an arrow. Day saved. End of part one. Yeah, my computer's shaking now because my dog is back shoving that stuffed shark up against the computer. Like, <laughs> just, just, just give it here. Do you want me to throw it or not? <laughs> this, this is... This so, is what happens when you pregame before you do your drunk comics recording is you forget to close the door. <laughs> All right. Well, this is, this is Crayley from Phoenix Sisters Cosplay signing off drunk as usual. This is drunk comics. Like and subscribe. Like it. Comment. Subscribe it. Follow it. Share it. <laughs> and comment if you want to hear more Godzilla commentary. With Cody Flores, who is oh, also wait, an author. On. Also, if you guys want to see like a huge disaster of a comic, Alien 3, the script by William Gibson, who was the godfather of cyberpunk. If you want to see uh, what a guy wrote for a screenplay on a napkin, and then they were like, let's turn this into a comic. Th this is the book, because I will do the rest of the Godzilla rage across time. I will do Alien 3. You guys just let us know down in the comments. Yeah! Goodbye! <laughs> <Get> <laughs>